Hello, and welcome to another production brought to you by the National Corrugated Steel Pipe Association. Today, we'll be talking about the production processes used to make polymer-coated corrugated steel pipe. Polymer-coated corrugated steel pipe has been almost exclusively coated with trench coat. The protective film, first invented by the Dow Chemical Company, but now produced by Valve Film North America. Trench coat has been an industry leader for over 40 years and has been cited in a study by Elsley Technology as offering superior corrosion and abrasion protection. It is through specialized laminating processes whereby a film is applied on the inside and outside of coils of galvanized steel used for storm drain systems and culvert applications. The corrugated steel pipe industry estimates that polymer coated pipe can have a service life of more than 100 years. In fact, pipe coated with trench coat outlasts and outperforms the competition in nearly every environment. When trench coat film is properly applied to galvanized steel, the polymer coated steel will meet or exceed all performance specifications of ASTM A742 and Ashto M246, as well as federal specification WWP-405B. Hello, this is Mike Mounts, R&D Manager for Valfilm North America. Trench coat protective film is produced in Valfilm's plant in Finley, Ohio, which is an ISO certified plant. The film is produced using a process called blown film extrusion. Blown film extrusion is one of the most significant polymer processing methods and is used to provide an excellent consistent product with the desired solid state properties. The process starts with the raw materials, polymer resins, being fed into the extruders. The extruders are designed to melt, mix, and consistently meter the molten polymer to the process dye system. From there, the dye system will determine the final polymer product's shape and physical properties. In blown film extrusion, the dye forms a cylindrical vertical bubble. The vertical bubble allows for the molten polymer to form into the correct film specifications, such as shape, size, thickness, width, physical properties, etc., while being cooled through the controlled air. The air is used to chill the polymer back to a solid state. The bubble is then carried to the correct bubble tower height to ensure proper cooling. At the top of the tower, the bubble is collapsed to form a two-ply thick sheeting. At this point, the sheeting, also known as a web, is supported by rollers as it continues to travel down a vertical descent. Nip rollers control the web tension for clean edge trim. Once the edges are trimmed, the web path splits into two individual sections for a single ply sheet of film. The film web is then wound into single sheeting rolls so it can be processed into the next lamination step. The lamination process starts with a galvanized steel coil which has been certified by the steel mill to meet all of the requirements for producing polymer coated steel. The steel sheet goes through an alkaline cleaning tank to remove any surface contamination. It then proceeds through a four brush scotch bright machine to clean the coil of any contamination such as white rust or a pretreatment. Afterwards, the sheet moves through a double fresh water rinse tank that is continuously filtered. Finally, the coil passes through the squeegee rolls to ensure that all excess water has been removed. After cleaning, the steel sheet goes through the chem coater, which applies a thin layer of pretreatment. This serves to add yet another layer of corrosion resistance to the laminated CSP product. This pretreatment also serves to provide additional reactive sites for bonding of the adhesive polymer in the trench coat film. Now that the pretreatment has been completed, the treated sheet passes through a series of heating units to cure the pretreatment and assure adequate adhesion to the galvanized steel. The steel then goes through a gas-fired oven designed to heat the sheet to 400 degrees F. 
As the sheet exits the oven and enters the lamination area, a series of infrared process controllers continuously measure the temperature of both sides of the steel sheet to ensure that a constant 400 degree F temperature is maintained throughout the process. Upon exiting the oven, the steel sheet enters the laminating stage where two separate webs of 12 mil thick trench coat protective film are pressed onto the top and bottom of the hot steel using 60 inch wide neoprene nip rolls. The nip roll pressure is held at a constant 100 psi. The combination of the heat from the steel sheet and the pressure from the rollers produces a durable chemical and mechanical bond between the trench coat film and the galvanized steel. Once the steel and the web have been combined, the sheet moves through a quenching area where cold water is jet sprayed onto the sheet to quickly reduce the temperature to 100 degrees F. Before the steel sheet is recoiled, a sample is cut to perform the testing specified by ASTM and Ashto. These tests were designed to ensure the polymer coated steel is of the utmost quality by testing for properties such as the thickness of the polymer coating, adhesions, holidays, and impact resistance. The coated steel is also stenciled in order to ensure the proper traceability of both the steel coil and the film which was applied to it. Finally, after quenching, the sheet is rewound into a coil form, banded, and shipped to fabricators. From here, the fabricators will form the coated steel sheet into polymer laminated corrugated steel pipe products. Once the coated steel sheet coil reaches the fabricators, the final product can be manufactured using one of two different processes, riveted construction or helical. For helical pipe, the pre-coated coil is loaded onto a mill equipped with roll forming tooling that is positioned corrugate the flat coil into the desired corrugation profile. Once the corrugations are formed, the material then passes through a seaming die that places a lock seam as the pipe is wound into its desired diameter. During riveted construction, corrugated sheets are formed using a similar process in mill, but rather than being wound into pipe utilizing a lock seam, the flat corrugated sheets are cut to various lengths depending on the diameter of the pipe being constructed. Once the sheets are cut to the appropriate length, they are placed into a roll machine that roll the sheets into a circular shape or can. These cans are then riveted together, constructing the pipe to its required length. At this point, if the end user requires an arch profile, the pipes can be arched using either an internal or external arch press. The diameter of each pipe can range from 12 inches up to a whopping 144 inches, 12 feet with the individual run lengths up to 50 feet. Each pipe can easily be made to the customer's exact length requirements with little to no waste. In addition, standard, 3x1, 5x1, and spiral rib profiles are available with gauge variability ranging from 18 gauge up to 8 gauge. With all of the gauge and profile options available, polymer coated CSP can be designed and built to meet almost any project requirement. Although a polymer coated corrugated steel pipe is very tough and durable, some extra precautions may be needed to avoid excess damage to the coating. On larger pipes, it is recommended to utilize lifting lugs to prevent fork and chain damage from loading and unloading. The use of straps instead of chains to tie down the pipes will lessen the likelihood of metal to metal contact. It is not recommended to nest polymer coated pipe shipments as it may increase the likelihood of damage to the coating when the end user unloads the pipe. Installing polymer coated CSP is very much the same as installing regular CSP. It's recommended that you use a good granular backfill that is free of large foreign or frozen objects. If damage does occur during installation or shipping, there are several approved bituminous or mastic type protective coating materials meeting ASTM A849 such as Disco RS90. After cleaning and drying the damaged area, the touch-up can be applied in the field with a brush or a roller. Full guidelines on the repair of damaged coatings can be found in ASTM A762.
my name is David Marth. I'm the county engineer in Greene County, Illinois, and I'm here to talk about polymer coated galvanized pipe. Um, we've been using the pipe for 18 years. 18 years ago, we started experiencing less than desirable service life due to subsurface drainage in the agriculture area. Uh, we have a lot of subsurface chemicals that come through the drain tiles. So we looked at various Federal Highway uh, Administration circulars and empirical testing and we were impressed with the amount of service life that they were recommending and estimating from polymer coated galvanized and as a result we started using it and till today we have we use all polymer coated galvanized on all of our crossroad locations and all the pipes that we put in over the last 18 years still look essentially like the new pipes that we're installing today look just like the ones that are behind me here and we're very happy with the performance that we get out of them the ease of installation and uh, all the overall characteristics of the pipe. Uh, we're very happy. To find out more information on coatings, studies and reports, a project, or a member near you, or anything else related to corrugated steel, by visiting www.ncspa.org. And stay up to date by following us on social media.